Hey, hey witches. witches. <laughs> oh my We're goodness. Back. We are back and ready to get through eight chapters today. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it, yeah, there's a lot that's going to happen and it's going to be so good. Listen, it has been a wild week. Like It really has. COVID it, and... <laughs> Yeah, Brandy's got COVID. And high blood pressure, just... apparently. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's just been stressed because of money, and she got promoted. Well, okay, I don't know why I'm talking in third person. I got promoted. Oh, <laughs> That's annoying. Sorry. Uh, I got – I think I'm just used to, like, typing out messages on, like, Facebook. Yeah. And it's just – it happens. Um. Anyways, and I got, like, promoted – uh so like i'm gonna be full-time now and it's just uh i've been dog sitting too we've got my sister-in-law's dog here so if you hear any barking it might be from my house Lord. if you hear any screaming it's definitely me i have <laughs> I, now that i live in south carolina roaches are like so common here everyone's like yeah whatever that's a thing and i'm just like it shouldn't be it really shouldn't <laughs> why is this a acceptable. thing and I haven't seen any in the carpeted rooms, but I've seen a couple of babies today and I've killed them. And we like finally got traps out and like, we're fucking going ham. We're going <laughs> to take it back to the nest. We're going to kill it. We're going to burn it. I don't care what it is. We're going to do something. Uh, but if I see, Careful, if I your see, bug you're talking about there. I don't give a shit. It's got to get the fuck out of here. I don't. Oh my gosh. The palmetto bugs can go away. I don't care. They're That's fucking wild. disgusting. Anyways. All right. Anyways, chapter 45. Roaches, <laughs> 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 fucking tably. <laughs> it took me a second. I was like, roaches, where? And, and then I forgot. Oh, Oh, yeah. Roach number one and roach number two. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, so this chapter would have been a great cliffhanger had we finished it last um, last episode. But I wrote so much about chapter 45. Um, yeah. Starting with the first thing I wrote was, I mean, he's got a point. So let's see what I was talking about. <laughs> what page was it? 426. It was oh, right off the bat. Right off the bat. Um... Oh, yeah, Reese is like, if you want proof that we're not scheming with Hyburn, consider the fact that it would be far less time-consuming to slice into your minds and make you do my bidding. Like, For I mean, real, though. He's got a point. Like, why Why would he lie? If he's known for doing that under the mountain, then, like, what's stopping him from doing that now? Like, Right. He's trying to earn your trust. Well, and at this point, like, you guys didn't realize Valaris was an actual city, and... It got attacked by Hyburn of all people. Right. Isn't that a little suspicious? Right, but but they could be in line. But shut the fuck up, Tamlin. <laughs> <laughs> I it's all you. <laughs> yeah, he. Oh my god, just Tamlin. This entire just pisses me off. So all he is doing is just like stirring the pot. He's just trying yeah. to change shit up, like. And it's like, okay, well, you guys are here to discuss war. Like, all you're doing is trying to throw Feyre under the bus saying that she's, like, a line slut. Like, that she's a whore. She does this. She does that. Like, shut the hell up and get to the point. Yeah. God. Anyways. Um, um, so, page 427, the very next page. I was not surprised by this either because Tarquin is smart. Um, he's like, why did you help us when Hybern came to Adriana? Um, and then you didn't ask for anything in return. And Reese was like, isn't that what friends do? And um, he's like, I rescind the blood rubies. Let there be no deaths between us. Um, which I expected that. But then Cassia is like, don't expect Aaron to return hers. She's grown <laughs> attached to it. And I'm fucking cracking up. And then Varian's just like, yeah. Yeah. That's like, my girl. That's exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, on the very next up. Right on the very next page of 428, um, there was 
Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> uh, I think it's Eris that said that. Eris snored and surveyed Nesta, who stared right back at him. Um, Eris said, pity you didn't bring the other sister. I hear a little brother's mate is quite the beauty. And then everyone's like, or like, well, Quarter Dreams is like, fuck, they know. Um, cause now it's like to get back at Lucian, they're probably going to attack her sister and just like all kinds of like freaking out. Some more was like, you still certainly like to hear yourself talk, Eris. Good to know some things don't change over the centuries. And then he smiled and goes, good to know that after 500 years, you still dress like a slut. And it's just like, what? Holy shit. Like, I get it. You want to be an asshole and you want to act like you haven't seen your, like her in years, but why are you going to be like that? And then all of a sudden, as is like seated one second, and then he's just over the table in Eris's face. And it's like, you know, she can be whatever she wants to be. He's just jealous she couldn't, or he couldn't get her. <laughs> right? Like, fuck you, bro. <clears throat> and I know that they're like, I feel that we're on a redemption arc, but then he's still such a dick. And I'm just like, right. mm. although and I did see somebody in the Vichy Bookworm group the other day. And they were talking about how they were they were reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. They were in the first book. And I was like, oh, God. And they were talking about how they can't stand Reese. And they want her to end up with They Tamlin. love, they love and Tamlin. I was, like, and I was like, oh, my God, that's the same. Like, I mean, I didn't want her to be with Tamlin either. So I fucking hate Tamlin. But, like, I didn't like Reese either. And I was like, oh, God, just keep reading. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I looked at that. And I'm like. Oh, honey, your heart is about to be broken once you yes. hear what Taylin has done. Yes. Ugh, poor baby. It's okay. Ugh. She'll get there. I thought the same thing. I, You know, at first I was like, God, I hate Reese. And then I was like, no, yeah. actually, I really like him. But isn't she supposed to end up with Reese based on TikToks that I've seen? And I, like, started, like, ruining it for me. And I just got really confused. <laughs> and then... I was like, God, I don't, I don't know. I like Tamlin. And then the second book came around. And I was like, no, fuck this dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. I fuck never him. liked I him, him so for the record, but I also didn't like Reese at first. And I, I love all the people that are like, I hate this book. Is it worth continuing reading? And I'm like, yes. The first two books it's are very like slow. world building and like yeah. background building. But then you get to this book and it's like, whoa. Like, and then it I all just fits book. together. Yeah, if we were reading this for the podcast, I would have read it in like two days. Yeah, and I'm forcing myself to read it slowly because you got to like I, think it through and. Well, and I don't. It's I think it's better when I don't know what's coming. Like, true. It, it yeah. My my reactions more authentic. So. I'm yeah, that's very true. Although <laughs> there is a big like revolutionary Darth Vader level reveal in this. We'll probably get to it in this episode, and I called it in the last episode. <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm and so it made excited. me feel like I know you've seen um, Pitch Perfect with Anna Kendrick. Yeah. And it made me feel like Anna Kendrick when she's like, his name is literally Dark Father. What do you mean? Because the guy's like, you mean to tell me that you predicted the most cinematic reveal, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and she's like, his name is literally Duh. Dark Father. Because they literally talk about how dark Lucian is all the time. Yeah. Just like, right? Hey. Yeah. Anyways. God. Any. Um. Spoiler oh alert. my god <laughs> right oh my god and um oh what is it so the next one on 429 um oh what is it i don't know i put oh my god that's hilarious and i have no idea why i think because like she stood up and like walked over to Az where he was beating the fuck out of. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay, so she's like basically like come here, like showing her power, and Tamlin's like staring at her. And I'm like, oh my god, yes, Queen, like show it. Yes. And then a little bit later, she like goes over and gets like wine for him to calm him down. And <laughs> uh oh. And then she looks to the High Lord of Summer and says, that's twice now we've handed you your asses. I think you'd be sick of the humiliation. And I'm just like. Yes. And then Helion laughed. And oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, fuck you, Baron. It's like, Eris, seriously, like. Yeah. That is twice now that they've beat your ass. Just stop. 
Like, anyways. Oh my gosh. And then, so my next thing is on page 431. I like how Helion doesn't play in this, in this setting. He's like, all right, let's get back to business, y'all. Shut up. Like, quit playing like, around. Y'all drama queens. Even though he's a drama queen himself, I can just... Um, and then I like how um, they're also, they find out that the other courts were betting as well on how long it was going to take before fights broke out. And I'm like, oh I love it. There's a, there's a part on 431 where, um, oh, they talk about uh, the, the girl uh, who is a tinkerer. What, what's her mm-hmm. name? Um, I think it's just called. Mulan? I thought you said Mulan, and I was like, who? <laughs> who the <laughs> fuck did you say? Um, yeah, Land. New Wan. I, I, when I think of New Wan, I just think, like, New Wan. <laughs> like, some <laughs> a hick like a Midwestern movie. way to say it. Yeah, New Wan. Yeah. New Wan. Maybe it's New Wan. New Wan? Maybe. Yeah. Um, anyways, so she's the tinkerer, and I, you know, I always thought that day... The decor did Lucian's eye. I didn't realize it was Dawn. I guess I never really thought about it. I thought Day did it. And I guess I don't really know what, like, Dawn's thing is all about. Like, Autumn's fire. We got Spring, who's, like, turning into Beast or whatever. Um, and Helion and decor Not Day. Yeah, decor is, like, all about their... Curse breakers, right? Knowledge and, yeah... Ravenclaw, essentially. Um, so I don't I know why. That that's where I would want to go, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I like this one. If it's not the Autumn Court, I want this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. I just, I, I guess I always thought Day did it. And I always thought Day did it because of the possible relationship that Autumn had with Day. But it sounds like it was more the relationship that Spring had with Dawn, right? It, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm talking about, like, a person from Autumn and a person oh. from the Day Court. Like, that person from Day Court was like, here, I give, I'll give you this eyeball because Amarantha's a fucking slut. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was Dawn who did it. So I thought that was cool. I was just really confused for a while. But I thought that was cool. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, the next page, we find out that they have been, um, they've been developing, like, basically a antidote to (coughs) Feibe. Sorry, I got excited. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Baron, Baron's, Baron's response to the Feibane. Listen, Baron is a tool. I cannot. (laughs) He's a fucking idiot. (laughs) And, okay, so for anyone who listens to this outside of the United States, I don't know how it is in those, in, like, other countries or whatever and, like, COVID vaccine. But, like, in America, there's a lot of people saying, like, they can't trust the healthcare system or anything to give us, like, the COVID vaccines because they don't know what it is. I don't know. It might be the same. It might not be. We just don't hear about it. But I think it's just so funny because it's, like, Baron said, and we're supposed to trust you with this substance we're to blindly ingest. And I'm just like, <laughs> this does. is so relevant. It is such a COVID yeah. like saying that I hear all the fucking time. And it's like, people are seriously all the time like, don't be a blind sheep, do your own research. Okay, let me just get out my chemist set. And- yeah, let me just see what this means. Well, and then somebody, somebody at work the other day made like, tried to make it like similar to COVID where it was just like talking about glowfish. They're like the stuff that they put in the glowfish, it's not very like, it's not good for them. That's why they like, they don't live so long. And I was like, okay, well I don't, I don't work for the people who make glowfish. I don't work for anything. I just sell the fish. I don't work for them. I don't, I am not a part of their research team. I cannot sit here and tell you for a fact that they're, it's bad. I can tell you it's not natural. These fish do not come out glowing like that. They are very unnatural fish. But I can't sit here and tell you that. And he goes, it's like the COVID vaccine, you know? Oh, God. You never. And I was just like, no, no, it's not. No, I, shut up. No, it's not, sir. Do you want no. these fish or not? Like, if you don't want them, then move along. 
Do you want fish? <laughs> yeah. I was like, do oh you want gosh. fish? He's like, no, I'm just walking by. Well, like, keep going. I have a job to do. <laughs> I have to feed the fish and you're over here talking my ear off about fucking glowfish. I don't know. I don't see how they're made. I just get them and I put them in the tank. Like, fuck off. Right. God. Go away. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trying to get yeah. me to say that they're bad. Oh, COVID. Just, oh, and then they're like, well, if her family is from this other place on the on the continent, <gasps> whatever, I know. They fought for the loyalists. Whose interest does she serve? Like, shut up, Baron. That's like, like saying I am like a Trump supporter because I come from America. Or because my family is like, yeah, like my family supports Trump. Do I tell them that they're idiots? Yes, I do. Love you, but you're an idiot. Like, <laughs> if you want to disown me for that, then fine. I don't have to love you anymore. Like more, I have my, more room. My for... family is well aware that I am have very different political and religious beliefs. I than just, I but I know you've I had some trouble here lately. I just, I ain't got time for that. Like, no. I don't give a shit if you like him or not. Your reasoning for liking him is what I give a shit about. Your yeah, reasoning for blindly believing him is what I give a shit about. <laughs> and that's the only reason I don't argue with my parents and stuff about it. Because they don't agree with his, like, any of the racist things that he said or any of the Yeah. Like, why am I sound? Why am I talking like this? I feel like I have an accent right now. And I don't know what's happening. Anyway. Um. <laughs> It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But I feel like my parents don't, like, agree with his, like, anti-LGBTQ or, like, yeah. now we're not going to get into abortion and all that because I know some of my family agrees with me on that and some don't. But that's a whole different story. Yeah. I Ugh, feel like it's I just crazy. went way off track. But, like, again, I feel like her saying that she's a loyalist because her family is – is like saying that I'm a Republican because my family is, which guess what? Not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just really frustrating because you're just assuming based on 500 years ago. Right. That's Was that's she like even saying, alive then? like right. It, uh. And then it's I like <laughs> Nesta. Oh, Nesta. Uh, you know, she's a saint. I just. Oh, wait, what else did I say? Page 434. Oh, Eris. Eris decides that he says, I will take it. This is like his redemption arc or part of it, I feel. He's like, I will take the antidote, even though Baron is an idiot. Like, Eris is still a dick, but at least he's a semi intelligent dick, I guess. Right. But then Nesta, Nesta's like, so you won't be taking the antidote? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love her. Anyway. She doesn't have to watch anything, not when you're flying that sort of horse shit at her. Also, love, I wrote, side note, love that the other High Lords are just ignoring Tamlin now. Like, he just keeps saying stupid shit, and they just keep ignoring him entirely. Like, that's cracking me up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's a prick. He deserves it. Yeah. I don't have anything until 439. Um, on 436, um, I just said Baron might not leave this room alive. Oh, God, if only. Keeps, keeps talking shit. Um, but then I don't have anything else till 439 as well. Because <laughs> this was that, that big cliffhanger moment that we were going to have for the last episode. <gasps> oh my god, I just read this part and it makes so much more sense. Okay, so on 436, Baron smiled a bit. Only three of us were present for the last war and nod to Reese and Helion, whose face darkened. Because of what happened and what led up to everything. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, poor guy. Oh, poor guy. He's reliving it all. Anyways, all right. Um, yeah, and then on page 439, I was just like, well, I didn't expect it to be Feyre. <laughs> yeah, I expected it to be like Reese, but so. Or Cassian. Yeah. Or maybe even Nesta. Oh, yeah, that would have been a good one. And like actually seeing like maybe what power Nesta has, that would have been cool. Uh, yeah, so basically Baron, like Tamlin, won't shut the fuck up. He's just consistently talking about what happened um, 
under the mountain, basically, like, did you know that while your mate was warming Amarantha's bed, we were locked up beneath the mountain? Did you know that while he had his head between our legs, most of us were fighting to keep our families from becoming the nightly entertainment? And then Tarquin's like, all right, that's enough, like, whatever. And then he's just like, and now Rizan wants to play hero. Amarantha's whore becomes Highburn's destroyer. But if it goes badly, will he get on his knees for Highburn or just spread his? And then at that point, like, Farah fucking blew up and just blew all her powers at him. And now Fire everyone knows. Out of me. <laughs> yeah. And now everyone knows she's got powers. <laughs> yes. And, and you know just... what? He deserved it. I would have done it too. Oh, yeah, he did. Like, Fuck you, Baron, anyway. Well, and so we open up chapter 46 straight up into it. Like, Baron is shielding every single thing that Farah is sending his way. Like, water, ice, fire, all of that, air. Um, and Reese is trying to, like, calm her down through the bond. And she's just not listening. She's like, I'm going to kill him. I'll gladly kill him and be done with it. Um, so basically, she, like, breaks through the shield and Using then the spell Using breaker days. curse <laughs> curse the dog breaker is outside thing the door wagging his tails which oh is the door. his tails yeah his, his one tail but it might as well be more than one that tail is powerful <laughs> um so then basically as soon as his shields dropped water rushed in it was basically like drowning baron <laughs> and you know way to go Feyre literally blew the cover due to your damned emotions but same I would have done the same thing yeah. so and then it continues on that same page where Helion's like I wondered where it went that little bit so small like a fish missing a single scale but I still felt whenever brushed I still felt whenever something brushed against that empty spot no wonder you made her high lady and it's like oh so they did know they did feel it missing well, and I feel they they had to have an idea that Feyre had it. Like you all gave it to her. And well, and I even wrote I about if... that because they're like, Feyre says, Feyre even says it on one of the a page. What page is that? Four forty five. Which I know I'm like skipping ahead, but she's like, yeah, you good. gave me this power. Where's that at? It's my power now. <laughs> I will use these powers, I think it's at the top. powers to smash Highburns to bits. Yeah. And if you think that my possession of a kernel of your magic is your biggest problems, then your priorities are severely out of order. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah, fuck them dudes. Because, like, as soon as she said that, um, Baron left, basically. Yeah. And then Kalias is like, did you master the ice? And she's like, all of it. And then... Vivian is like, I'll fight with you. Yeah, Vivian's like, doesn't make a difference if she did or did not, like... Yeah, I'll fight with you. And then every uh who was it? Cassette Cressrate Cresseda. Whatever the fuck her name is. Isn't she the one who also stood up? Yep. Oh That's yeah, you saved Tarquin said you saved us under the mountain. Losing a kernel of power seems a worthy payment. Honestly. Like, bitch. Right. Excuse and me. <laughs> you willingly brought her back to life and gave her immortality. You did that of your own accord. Yeah. You cannot be mad at her because it's not like she she was dead. Like it's not like she stole your power. You gave it to her. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, and it's like I'll fight with you as will I. Blah 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 blah. And so then finally, because the women rose the men rose and it's like yeah fuck them dudes girl power I literally wrote that. <laughs> only the women have sense thank goodness they came like right and you know after all of this these sins are never going to host them again no <laughs> it's like his fucking furniture is ruined because like the fucking who people... does that who goes into someone else's house and just like, <laughs> like starts rawr. like one starts <laughs> yeah, it starts clawing up the fucking furniture. It's like, bro, put your nails away. I'm about to put some kitty caps on you. Like, God damn it. <laughs> and if you want to get the shit if they yourself. Were at Reese's court. Like, if they were at Reese's court and he was being yeah. shredding. Sort of, okay, that's one thing because that's who you're mad at. I can see that. If you're not mad at Thesson or Thesson or whatever his name is. Stop tearing up his shit. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> right. Like, God damn. Like, shut the fuck up. You're just pissed off because Reese is the most power or is the most powerful high lord of this history. Like, fuck you. And because Feyre chose him. Like, and I wonder why. She went there willingly, and she didn't want you. 
Anyway, chapter yeah. 47. I think we can get through it before the break. Oh, yeah. Um, I love Vivian. Yeah. She might be my new favorite character. Um, She's so funny and sassy. Okay, she's out 447. Um, oh, because she's like, as it, as is like, sorry, talking about um, attacking Eris. And Vivian's like, he had it coming. Eris is a piece of shit. <laughs> and then <laughs> Callius looks at her with his eyebrows raised and she's like, what? He is. <laughs> And I'm just like, fucking yes. I love her. She's like that city girl that like never actually got to like intermingle with like high society. Yeah. And she's like from the Bronx and she's going into like Manhattan, like rich neighborhoods. And she's just like, I don't give a fuck. Like y'all fuck <laughs> yes. you. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I fucking love her. <laughs> she's hilarious. Also, um, I don't have anything till page 450, but like what I have on page 450 makes my whole fucking day. Go ahead. I don't have anything till 52. Um, the idea of Helion coming on to the trio of more Cassian and Azrael is my favorite fucking thing yes. in the whole world. Like that it makes is, my entire day. And I just love it too. Cause he's just like, yo, I like threesomes. And here's the thing. Uh, I'm honestly, okay. Up to this point, I'm honestly surprised him and Moore have never, like, actually got in bed together. I mean, I'm not saying she's a slut. He is. But, like, <laughs> 500... <laughs> but 500 years of, like, possibly trying? Never once thought about it. I guess, like, 50 years under the mountain, but still, like, there's 450 years unaccounted for. Right. But, like, um... I don't know. It... There is a ancient Greek, uh, like general of some sort. Uh, I'm gonna fuck this name up. I looked up the pronunciation. Uh, Alcibiades or Alcibiades uh, or something like that. Um, he was known for his uh, fun history fact. He was known for his um, sensual ways. <laughs> he, uh, there's plenty of paintings after him, I guess, of him being, like, torn apart from, like, orgies and threesomes and all that. And even in Assassin's Creed, he's a character in there. Um, and you, you're introduced to him. He's literally looking for oil for an orgy he's having <laughs> with, like, two, uh, two, like, servants or something like that. And you can flirt with him. I mean, you can go in there and sleep with him, too. And it's funny because he'll be like, oh, whether you're a female or male, he's like, mm, you're nice and strong. Would you like to rub some oil on me once you go grab that from the kitchen for me? And then, like, the entire, every single time you see him, he's trying to sleep with you, regardless if you slept with him for the first time. And it's so funny because it's like, this is, this, he reminds That's me of that. Funny. And he, he dresses just like him, too. Yeah. Like, the very Greek toga. Like, I just think it's funny. I love that. Um, <laughs> So I love that he's, I just like Helion because he like gets more and more um, intriguing as the time goes on. Because then we find out that when he rescued, what is her name? Baron's wife? The, I don't think we ever got a name. Okay. Well, when he rescued her, um, like when her sisters by her time and they were taken by the uh, other, it's a hibern, I guess. Um, yeah. Helion saved her and they had an affair. Um, and Thera figures it out on this page. And I don't understand how she figured it out. I get it. I see similarities. But like, no, I don't know. Well, I think because um, she chose to stay. Chose. And like the way that Helion's saying it, like but he doesn't even know. But, like, why would she choose to stay if she could leave and go be with the person she so clearly loves? And all of her sons are dickheads, too, except for that last one. And she, I, I think that she stays for Lucian, and I think that's how Fair figures it out. At least that's how I understood it or interpreted yeah. it, I guess. Um, but I love that Reese is like, whatever you've just figured out, Reese said, you better stop looking so shocked by it because that's when Fair figured it out. Yeah, because they're, they're like, she's just staring at him, and then it's just like, 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, I didn't know how she figured it out. I mean, it's good. That's good detective work right there, but. And then um, she tells Reese on the next page, and he's like, holy burning hell. <laughs> <yeah>. Fuck. <laughs> There's a, there was one on 457. Um. Uh, let's see. It was something about Nesta. Oh. <laughs> She's, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so Nesta walks into the room. Before Heliod even walked in, Feyre was going to go back there to see her. And so she didn't walk in at all because she got obviously interrupted um so nesta walks out and goes straight up to Feyre, and helion's like oh i don't think we were introduced properly earlier he crooned to nesta i'm i don't care <laughs> <Said Nessie. laughs> i'd like a word <laughs> goes straight goes straight to Feyre. i'd like a word now and it's like honey <laughs> yes yeah, she's like i don't care which makes me, I mean, even if I feel like Nesta honestly would already do that, but makes me wonder if she's like super being like that because the uh, mating bond. Oh, possibly. And I think also she's scared right now because like she's sensing that something is wrong and she doesn't know what it is, but like she's scared, I feel. Yeah. Also, then they, like, drop that bomb, like, something's going on, something's wrong, and then they just basically are like, we'll go check it out, but... We don't know. Yeah. And it, you know, I never understood why they never actually thought maybe we should check out, I don't know, the wall? <laughs> She is right. basically made of the cauldron, so like if she's feeling something's off and nothing's off in like Here, dawn, then, then maybe right. they should go check elsewhere. Right. I mean, or it might go be go check on Elaine or go check on something. Amarin. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and then Farrah gets a little judgy. Always. On page what is it four sixty? Um, Helion and Moore are like flirting on the couch, and then they end up going to bed together. And Farrah's like, is that a good idea? Blah, 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 blah. What? She's a fucking adult. She's 500 years older than you are. She's the Morrigan. Like, they're adults. Keep your nose to yourself and shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was just annoyed by Farrah there. She got a little judgy and I didn't like it. It's like, what the? You ain't her mama. Right. Like, shut up. What are you going to do? Barge in there, open the door, throw it open? Because I feel like you, I just try to get you to join. <laughs> she literally, honestly, though, she literally had, uh, she literally gave a blowjob, blood crusted, all of that. <laughs> yes. And she's like sweaty and nasty in the middle of fucking summer court. Like, and she has the audacity to sit there and be like, why is more going to bed with him? You straight up said he was fucking handsome. Like, do not right. sit here and judge. Right. Like, and like she admitted to Reese. Friend. Yeah, like she admitted to Reese, like, how he looked. Like, well, have you looked at him? Like, right. <laughs> let Hello. her have fun. She's just um Everybody deals with their stress differently. Favor, shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. And she's just mad because uh, she, it because of Az. Yeah. She would just butt out. It wouldn't be a problem. Exactly. The last thing I wrote was on the last page of this chapter on page 462. Um, She's like, I'm not going to be able to have sex with Tamlin in this same time. Like, I don't I don't think I can do that. And she says, I'm sorry. And Reese is like, you don't need to apologize ever. And I'm like, because <sighs> I feel like in so many instances, like women are, they feel guilty for not wanting to have sex. And I feel like that's such bullshit. Like if you're not in the mood and you don't want his dick, then he can go do it himself and he'll be just fine. Right. But also like, yeah, just, I, I like that part. 
Right. I wrote something about that too. One, first off, if she was with Tamlin, you know for a fact Tamlin would try so hard. He would try so hard to get her to be so loud or like to actually make a point of this is happening. Like a fucking tool. Second of all, I don't blame her. It's just really weird. And, you know, I kind of wonder if he could sense it. I don't know. Could he sense it? Could he, like... I don't think so, because I don't think they have any kind of connection anymore. I don't think they have connection either, but, like, just being a high lord sensing things, I mean, you could smell. Maybe. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I don't know, but it would be really awkward. I, I personally feel really awkward, like, going and staying at someone else's house and having sex. Like, yeah, that weird like, thing out. like I'm a guest in your house and I'm just gonna have sex in your bed. It's fine. Like, right. When Will and I were still like in our early stages of dating, um, he was having like a game night at his place and he wanted to like cook for everybody. And my friend Chloe came down and was staying the night and he looked at me, he goes, I know we're in like my apartment and we're like comfortable in the apartment, but I'm not having sex with you with your friend in the next room. And I was like, I don't care. Like I get it. That's fine. Yeah. I definitely understand. It's weird. Like, yeah. Like I was that teenage dirt bag where I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make sure everyone can hear like that annoying, stupid asshole uh, as a high schooler. (laughs) Yeah. And, but I was like, no, I get it. Like, no, that's weird. I can do it. (laughs) Teenage me was also different. I got that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to do that. (laughs) I'm going to do that TikTok trend. Um, the teenage dirtbag, uh, song. And I was looking through all my teenage dirtbag pictures and I'm just like, "Mm -mm. Mm -mm, this looks, oh, this is going to be bad. I watched somebody from high school have that teenage dirtbag photo. And I was just like, you literally look like you came out of the fucking 70s. Like, she had, like, her hair parted down the middle. It was, like, poofy because it was, like, curly but not, like, straightened. But straightened, I don't know, weird. She had this thick-ass headband. And, like, part of her hair in front of her ears, part of her hair behind her ears. And, like, just that headband right there. And just, like, a frilly shirt. And I'm just like, you're not fucking Machine Gun Kelly. Like, that's not a teenage <laughs> dirtbag look. You literally look like Miss Sally Mae over here. <laughs> and she was a straight A student. Like, what teenage dirtbag are you talking about? Like, you're a Listen, straight A student. I was a straight A student too, but I was still a dirtbag. Okay. <laughs> I I I was a straight A dirtbag. Like, I guess I was a straight A student until like my junior year when I had to take chemistry. That all went down the shitter because chemistry was awful. I was always a straight A student just because my formative years was at a private school, so like school was easy to me I guess I hate saying it that way but I mean I never studied or had homework or anything and everybody at school was like yeah I got the smart girl yeah I got the smart girl like that was my nickname in like grade school or not grade school but junior high grade school I was fucking stupid but (laughs) that's fine when you have to read autobiographies of nuns and you fall asleep and like reading chapters like yeah. Am I stupid or am I just fucking bored? <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. Like, I I was always in a fucking cornfield. I was either drunk. I was either high. Like, I was, I was a straight-A student, but I was not, not a good kid. <laughs> Anyways, oh all God. right. All right, weird but true. Right? Or weird yep. facts? What is it? Weird but true facts. 168. I think. I don't know. We'll get to it, I guess. Okay. Ooh, okay. It's about language. I can't understand you. More than 450 languages have been designated as endangered. In other words, the number of people who speak these languages is dwindling. And when those populations die out, there won't be anyone left who uses them. More than 70 endangered languages are, or were, native languages of the United States. That actually makes a lot of sense because we kind of fucking suck, you know, genocide and all that. I was going (laughs) to say, it's probably all the Native American, like, tribes that were killed. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) Funny how that happens. Anyways. I've been totally watching uh, in 
Inuit, I think that's how you pronounce it, yeah. on a a, pers- a a girl who's part of the tribe on TikTok. And she is always, like, describing, like, what she does, like, traditional foods, and it's usually, like, uncooked, like, whale or, like, uh, elk or something like that. I can't stomach it, but that's pretty cool. Anyways. Have you ever heard the rain? If you happen to be scuba diving during a rainstorm, definitely not a good idea. The sound of the raindrops on ocean surface could drive you mad. Small raindrops produce a surprisingly loud sound when they hit the surface of the water. First a plink, followed by a sharp ping like the ringing of a high-pitched bell. Large raindrops create more of a plunk sound, followed by a softer ping. Hmm. That's so, really interesting, actually. you might go deaf, apparently. Yeah. That's, I never knew that. I know sounds sound like can travel differently in water and be yeah. amplified at times. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Last one. Oh, God. I'm going to fuck this up. Okay. A new level of clean. The Felsenputzer is a group of volunteer mountaineers who clean bird droppings from the mountainsides in Switzerland. Gross. And seems kind of unnecessary, but okay. I guess if you, yeah, I guess if you enjoyed climbing, it's like a hobby, but you get paid for it. Okay. Weird. All right. Cool. Interesting. Nice. Weird, but true. Okay. Um, <laughs> chapter 48. Something is wrong with the cauldron. Oh, fuck. That's all I wrote. That's the entire thing that I wrote for this entire chapter. I wrote, something's wrong with the cauldron. Oh, shit, the wall. (laughs) That's all I wrote for this whole chapter. Right? So, basically, it's the next morning after the evening, and you could just feel a cleave in the land, apparently, and just, like, a blast of power. And Reese looks around. It's like the wall has been taken down. And Nesta's like, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. And Nesta's like puking and like freaking out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, basically the wall is now gone. It's gone. It was a short yeah. chapter just to find that out. And um, and it's, you know, it's really, really, it's kind of weird too because like, um, Right before that, we just, like, hear about Tamlin and all his, like, plans, and everyone's like, all right, I compiled it, it's true, it's like this, it's great, blah, 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 then all of a sudden, it's just the wall comes down, and it's like, all right, well, everyone's gone, like, we're yeah, all leaving. Everyone's like, okay, let's go home. Um, yeah. And, but, but right before the summer court leaves, though, Varian is like, tell her thank you, tell her, I'll tell her myself the next time I see her. I love the Vary and Amryn relationship. It's very intriguing. I'm like, hmm. Because, like, I can't tell if Amryn, like, just likes the attention or if she also likes him. But she's, like, this or like, worldly being. And I'm like, does she even have feel those that? feelings? Like, well, and it's like, we we know that Reese gives Amryn, like, jewels and all that. But there's no romantic relationship between them. So right. are they, like, besties? Yeah. Long lost friends from a war. I don't know something. It's crazy. Yeah. But okay. Chapter um, forty nine. Yeah. Well, that was forty. That is forty nine. That is. A chapter. That was forty. Yeah. That was forty eight. Well, no, the Varian and Amron part is in chapter forty nine. Oh. Okay. 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 Top page four sixty nine. Anyway. Oh, um, now I see it. <laughs> Then on page 470 is the next thing I have. I got 471. Um, Elaine has this idea to, it says they don't have time to evacuate the people from like their village and their, their area close to the wall to move them all into, um, what the fuck's his name? Grayson. Grayson and Lord Nolan. Yeah. Into their fortress i guess or... yeah i was i can't even think of a good word for it they have like this castle with like it's all walled in and they it's like you know what it reminds me of branch and um trolls when he's got like, <gasps> like a doom yeah. shelter like a doom <laughs> yeah, shelter like he's got all these prepared things and all this anyway Yo, i'm gonna go watch that after this <laughs> that's, such a, good show. that's um, such a good movie anyways yes. uh, but cassian's kind of a dick to elaine like 
he kind of growls at her because like she's like they have a grove of ash trees with weapons and Cassian kind of snarls at her but like shut up Cassian like I know it kind of like I mean, pisses me it, off but yeah I get it from like your stance like you've you've dealt with the ash like you know what it's like you know how it feels it's like Elaine's she's still in that stage help. yeah she's trying to help but she's also still in that stage where it's like she doesn't necessarily see that she is Faye she still yeah. feels and tries to act as if she's human and um it's just I don't know it's just weird and it's also weird that she's like finally piped up about this like where did this come from and it's just really really sad too because like um she's like she just she just wants what's best and like her heart's breaking because she doesn't want anyone to hurt like Grayson but it's like Grayson's gonna hurt you right and so it's just it's just yeah. sad it is and yeah I don't have anything else to 474 for this chapter. Same. So on 474, I wrote something about Nesta. And it's really funny because it's like... <laughs> it's, it's like the little thing between Cassie and Nesta. Yeah. So basically... Um, uh, uh, oh, okay. So they're talking about like... what's What's the next steps? And Nesta's like... I've never worn pants. And he goes, I have no doubt you'd start a riot if you did. And, but there was like no reaction from her. And so like, everyone's kind of worried. So he basically was like, any of those human pricks makes a move to hurt you and you kill them. Um, and then he gets uh, like, a little run for it. Like, yeah. And it's like, Ash can kill you now. Uh, a scratch can make you queasy enough to be vulnerable. Remember where the X's are in every room, every fence and courtyard. Mark them as you go in and mark how many men are around you. Mark where Reese and the others are. Don't forget that you're stronger and faster. Aim for the soft parts. And if someone gets uh, you into a hold um, and then just like showed her like all these things about like where to hit, to be the most vulnerable to men. Um, and then when he, he finished, he stepped back his hazel, hazel eyes turning with some emotion I couldn't place. Nessa surveyed the divine dagger in her hand then lifted her head to look at him. I told him, I told you to come to training, Cassie, and said with a cocky grin and then just walked off. And then she looked at Nesta and Nesta's like, don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> I like, fucking Nesta, love it. Oh Nesta, you should have gone to training. <laughs> yes. <gasps> and then, at the, yeah, yeah. At the end of the chapter. Feyre gets this brilliant idea, and I'm like, fuck yeah. Um, she's talking to Amran about the creature beneath the library, and its name is Briaxis. Okay, I, I looked this up, and this is actually a Greek or, like, a Roman name. It's Briaxis. Briaxis. I think. I'll have that to makes read. sense. That sounds like a Greek pronunciation. Um, so, Briaxis and... Um, they're going to ask it for another bargain to fight with them. It's Bryaxis. Bryaxis or something like Bryaxis. Okay. Bryaxis. There we go. Yeah. And that's the end of chapter 49. Like They're going to the library. Amran and Reese. Time to go library. see. Time and to go I only see wrote it. one thing. Same. For chapter 50. And that was, I, well, I guess I wrote two things. I wrote Reese is going to be so pissed. And then I was like, or he'll take it in stride because he's just like, okay. Um, <laughs> Whatever. All, Anything that helps us the, win. All Bri Bryaxes wants is a window. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like it's asking for such, like, it's just, it's a simple creature. It just wants simple pleasures. It just wants to be able to see outside. That's it. Like, oh. And it's I like, like it's a well, and then it's funny because he's like, okay, will I be able to hunt without restraint on the battlefields, drinking their fear and dread until I'm sated? And she's like, only Hybern, only Hybern, no one else. <laughs> and only yeah. until this war is over. Once this war is over, then you return here. We will give you this window. Yep. I love it. And it, it, it agrees. It's like, okay. And Amrin agrees. Like, that's that's a big mark for how much they need the extra help is that Amrin yeah. agrees. And I also think, too, it has nothing to do with the prison. So it's like, yeah, you don't want to know what's down there. But like, also, you're not going to the prison. So like, I'm OK with this. Right. But if we have him or it or whatever it is, now we just need the carver and maybe even the weaver. If we can get the weaver 
in the carver. They're golden. But also at the end of that chapter, Reese says, and the carver and Fair says he can rot down there. I don't have time for his games. But I have a feeling that that's not actually going to be true. I feel like they're going to get him somehow. But I, I get it. Um. All right. We finally reached part three of the book called Hi Lady. Hi, Lady. Shit's getting real. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Um, all right, chapter 51. Yeah, page 485. Oh, yeah, we're finally in the, uh, we're at the Illyrian war camps. Yes, and they're afraid of Nesta. <laughs> Keep her away from the women and children. Like, what? It's so funny because it's like, <laughs> what is that? And Cassian's yeah. like, that is none of your concern. Is she a witch? And then it's, no one answers except for Nesta. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and she answers flatly, like just like that. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, if someone ever asks me, like, are you a witch? I just want to answer that. And then I just want to get all, I just want to get that response. Like, like that silent, creepy. Stay away from the ch women and children. <laughs> Will do, sir. They're probably witches too. They're <laughs> probably safer with me than they are with you, but that's fine. At least I'll give them their wings and let them have it. <laughs> right. Good God. Oh, okay. God. Anyways. <laughs> and then um, it's just funny because it's just like, let's get the girls out of here because Devlin's about to throw a hissy fit. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so then they go to like the tent or whatever and Moore starts to put the glamour on Elaine. I just have a really bad feeling about this. Like this whole chapter I wrote. I wrote on page 487, this feels like a bad idea. And then 488, yeah, I don't like this. Like, I, I just had a really bad feeling about it. I didn't like it. And that's all I wrote about page chapter 51. I just. Uh, I got something on 487. So, at the like, right before the end of the chapter, um, like, when they're putting the glamour on her, uh, like, more is just, like, calming her down. It's like, okay, deep breath. And then it's like she glamoured her. She goes, oh, I hadn't realized how ordinary it looked. And Moore's like, you're still lovely. Like, it's okay. And then Elaine goes, I suppose that war makes wanting things like that unimportant. And Moore was quiet for a heartbeat and said, perhaps. But you should not let war steal it from me regardless. And it's like, yes, queen, lift her up. Yes. yes. Well, and I feel like Moore's the same way. Like, Moore and Vivian, honestly, are both still gorgeous, but they were both warriors in the first war. Like, yeah, like they can. Think it's awesome. Well, it's it's kind of like the um, it's kind of like uh, when you see like women in the military, you you think they're gonna be like plainly butch, like not wearing makeup, nothing, and it's like they braid their hair into like pretty styles to be great for the military regulations. And, like, they wear makeup. It's not like you can't wear makeup. Some choose not to wear makeup, and that's fine. And then it's, like, people... And, like, that's their occupation, not their identity. Like, like, yeah. And so what? They want to be in the military. They might have a good reason for it. Maybe they... It's a family thing. Like, maybe they needed it for school. Like, who cares? Maybe they're a refugee um, who, like came here you know like it's just there's so many yeah and they're just paying back uh yeah. yeah and it's like too it's like if you're a gamer person like you have you can't be pretty you have to be like four eyes and you gotta be like lonely and you can't make friends nothing like that and like the girls who like cosplay or like look pretty while playing games like they're not real and it's just they're not real gamers and shut up. yeah and it's like they could be whatever they want and they could do whatever they want and look however they want. It doesn't matter. And like, fuck you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like these oh are gosh. gorgeous women and they also kick ass on the battlefield. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You're just jealous. You can't oh look gosh. that good. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to get through this. We I'm so excited. Then. And it ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> The best. Well, not the best, but a good one. Yeah. So we are at the fortress now with Grayson and Lord Nolan, and they're not, the guards are going to go get him, and he's going to come out to see Elaine, um, but they're not going to be allowed into the keep. So they let them in the guardhouse, and um, we see a lot of true colors coming up. Yeah. 
I also really like how vulnerable we see Nesta being because she's always been like the stone and we actually see her as vulnerable because we find out she's got PTSD from the cauldron so she can't take baths yep. in, a, in a tub. She needs buckets. Yep. And then they're going to basically make her a shower when mm-hmm. they get home. But I wonder what yeah. Elaine, like if she has any issue not issues but i i don't know but i i did write on page 491 like the reaction between elaine and grayson when they first see each other like they truly loved each other and it's I but think he's a he's, prick <laughs> yeah but like it, it it's yeah i think his hatred for fake people has it's it's blinding Yeah, and I think that's another one of those, like, family things. Like, he's been taught this growing up, so this is what he believes. And it's unfortunate because I think that – not that they could necessarily be together because, like, obviously he's going to die in 50 years and she's going to live forever. But, um, like, they could at least still be friends and work together. But his dad is like, she's fae too, murder, murder, murder. And she's a high lord's mate. Like, and they're like, how the fuck do you know that? And I wrote, oh, holy shit. That's all I wrote. Oh, great. Yeah. (laughs) Because, and because listen, like no one's a fucking asshole. Um, for right now, at least. Um, because he's just like yelling at them. Like, how, like, how are you Faye? Like, why are you Faye? Why is this? Why is that? Like, get out of here kind of shit. And, like, why should we believe you? And blah, blah, blah. And then everyone's questioning how he knows all this. And all of a sudden, fucking jiggery and walks in. And it's like, oh, I said it. <laughs> yeah. I told him. That's why I wrote, oh, holy shit. Because they're, like, in walks jiggery. And I'm like, son of oh, a bitch. Oh, great. This here we go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Jurian's growing on me. I kind of like him. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Jurian. I don't like so like if you go to like the wiki page, he ha- he's like pretty ugly. <laughs> like, well, he's not supposed to be attractive, right? Like he's supposed to be average looking. I don't know. Feyre says that everybody's attractive, so I really don't oh. know who's not attractive and who is attractive. Yeah, but I don't know. I just feel like I was just like, oh holy shit! Like come on. But of course, they would trust Jerry, and even though he's been aligned with like Hibern and shit, because he's human, and that's all they care about. That's their prejudice, and that's all they care about is that it, they're human. Yeah, and so. it's like okay, well, we know all of this. What, how is he described? Uh, no, I just want to know how he's described. Appearance. Here we go. Feyre describes Jiren as being a tall and handsome for a mortal with dark brown hair, cruel and calculating brown eyes, and tan skin. All right, well, the picture on the Wikipedia is just not that pretty. That's fair. To each their own, however. Yeah. I mean, that description doesn't seem like it's bad, just... Yeah. This picture itself makes him look kind of gaunt. He he literally looks like a gaunt version of um uh what's his name? Fuck from uh uh fuck uh Game of Thrones. Um <laughs> without the beard. Oh oh no, <laughs> he's uh oh. He's I not. Books, but I haven't watched it. Oh, who does he play? He is. Where's the cast? I need the cast. <laughs> Jon Snow. Okay. Without the, he reminds me the, the he reminds me of like a gaunt Tanner version of Jon Snow without the beard. Okay. <gasps> anyway. Okay, which is we have one new thing. We're gonna start a new weekly segment called Weekly Witch Tips. Um, so this week's tip I actually came across this um, just scrolling through Pinterest because you know as one does Um, 
and I found this blog post about witch, witchy tips. Um, it was like witchy tips 101 blog or something like that. Um, but the one that I thought was really interesting is when you're, because you know, we're all about manifesting when you're like writing down your goals for the week or day or whatever, um, to write it in green because the color green is a very prosperous color. Um, also wearing green, specifically painting your fingernails green or, um, wearing green jewelry on your hands is supposed to bring money. Um, yeah. Cause like, isn't like the energy goes through your fingertips and around your body and out through your other fingertips. Yeah. So green. It's like green. entering and exiting your body. Yeah. So write your goals in green and green fingernails or jewelry or probably even bracelets would work if you set your intentions correctly. Um, you can even burn it with a green candle. Be prosperous. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just to green everything. <laughs> green. It's all about green, 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 green. Anyway, so weekly witch tips. Yay. New segment. Woo. All right. Thank you all for joining us this week, and we will see you next time. Bye, witches. Bye.